Good morning. How is everybody out there? I hope you're doing well. It's, um, let's see, it's 15 degrees right now, and whew, I'm feeling it. It looks sunny outside, and I thought it was going to improve. I do need to actually go look at the weather and see what my plan is for the coming week. I need to try to make a good decision. Right now, thankfully, I could probably stretch out my work and the um, inventory I have. I could probably stretch it out even seven more days if I had to. I'm really trying to work on my cash flow versus you know, having a death pile or having enough put away that if there is a storm, then I'm not left short. And that's just a fine balancing act. Um, I could definitely easily stock up on a bunch of stuff that's really good but then that takes my cash flow for that week and kind of makes that really tight so I'm trying to just find a balance and I think what always happens for me that helps is that you know you just spend your time shopping and um, it happens to me a couple times a year I'll just find like especially at a garage sale I'll just find the entire mother load for nothing like they're moving they just it's all good stuff and they just basically give it to you and then that really kind of propels your cash flow forward and that kind of thing. So yeah, yesterday I thought I was going to take a nap. I was pretty sluggish when I was doing my shipping video and I had not slept well. And then I um I just I did okay. I made it through. Um you know, I didn't have to fight too hard to stay awake. I was willing to take a nap. I had kind of budgeted my time because I knew I hadn't slept well. But actually, um I got you know, into my paperwork. I was real driven to get that kind of caught up. I went and sat down with um, my accountant for an hour and ran some things by him, what he thinks is the best approach to scale the business without um, using too much debt, you know, and so I, I talked to him and then now I'm going to talk to this consultant person. Um, and uh, I told him, you know, what I was doing and, and um, you know, I just wanted to kind of get a grasp on my numbers and everything else. So I went through a lot with my accountant. I, I feel like I can read about 90% of my profit loss um, sheets that he gives me and my balance sheets. I, I know how to read about like... 80 to 90 percent of it but retained earnings is something it's been on there forever he sends them to me like clockwork every month and you know I just have been caught up with either being a nurse helping you know my mom different things no excuses like this is something I could have put a YouTube video on and listened to it on the road I have no excuse for not diving deeper into what's going on in my business but um retained earnings is something that you know <laughs> i'm still trying to figure out and so there's a lot on my um financial end that i just want to know uh kind of what that number means or whatever so i made really good progress yesterday in just like one hour just asking my accountant kind of you know, what are we doing here? What would you do if it were you where you're trying to scale, but you have a little bit of debt and you don't want to add to it. But yet on the other hand, I mean, I basically wake up every day and just kind of dumb down my income because I don't want to use a bunch of credit to grow. On the other hand, my stuff sells fast. My active to sold are pretty close together. So when I list stuff in 90 days, it pretty much has rotated out and sold. My average sale price uh, hovers depending on the hard goods I do for my son. That kind of skews it sometimes because he has lots of $100 items. And I only get about 50 of those. So you got to look at it. I'm not getting the full 100. I'm paying him back out. But anyway, no matter how you look at it, my average sale price hovers between $25 to $37 in the last like, you know, 40 days. It's, it's varied because I look at it quite a bit and just make sure I'm on track. So um, I have a lot of notes and she requested, you know, the last three years of taxes and all of this stuff. And so um, I have that one hour consultation coming up and I think it'll be really interesting. I think I'll at least get some insight and um, that's what I'm hoping to do. So I will let you know how that goes and kind of what decision I make. So um, I did have to stay up till midnight to list my 10 items. I was doing paperwork all day and I, I did not want to do it. I just ugh, did not want to list. And 
Um, not because it even takes that much time for me because I did it all myself. I didn't have anything from my VA that I had gotten to him and I just needed to power out 10 listings. And so I just did clothing items. That's what I have behind me. And I still want to say it took me like two hours just because I didn't have any photos. I had to upload them all and, um, and I wasn't moving the fastest. I probably could have done it quicker. But anyway, so I did go to bed knowing I had had a successful day and I did not neglect my listing. Um, my sales are just now starting to pick up like this morning. I don't know what I woke up to. I want to say I woke up to just one sale like from you know, since I shipped with you guys yesterday, I think I only had one sale till this morning because I procrastinated on my listing. I really should have done my listing, then done my paperwork all day. I knew that and I just, I just didn't have it in me. I wanted to get my hands on that paperwork and I wanted to avoid listing. And uh, sometimes I'm really into it and sometimes I'm just like, oh, I do not want to. I like the photos. I don't know why. The photos, you know, and once they're done, then I'll just go ahead and list. But I don't mind taking the photos. I don't know why I don't like listing. I don't know. I think I've just done it for 20 plus years off and on, and it's just not my favorite task anymore. Um, so, yeah, I did that. Um, what else did I do? I think that's about it. It was pretty much paperwork all day talking to my husband about what strategy he thinks we should take because it will involve him if I use a little bit of my business debt. You know, um, it's a family decision. I want to, you know, you're still responsible for that debt. So I just want to make sure if we do go that route that it's very small amounts and that it's what he thinks is smart too based on what my accountant told me. And then we'll have a final decision today. Um, we'll make a final decision. Obviously, no one else is going to make that decision. And then I have been looking at other ways to um, be able to grow the business faster. Needless to say, the best choice, which I am avoiding, but the best choice is just to, you know, work somewhere on the side as a nurse, you know, again, or whatever, and just take a little bit of pressure off the business so that all that money can go to inventory and and, um, you know, all my other numbers are wonderful. You know, I have very few expenses. Everything's pretty tightened up. But my accountant who I have here does not sell on Amazon or eBay. So, you know, he can't tell should you keep ink frog, should you keep shoe boxed, should you keep these things. Whereas this gal, she is a full-time seller and an accountant who I'm going to speak to. And so, um, you know, she understands exactly what I'm trying to do. And um, so that's going to be exciting. So anyway, I do finally have four orders for 24 hours. I guess it's not quite 24 hours. It's only nine in the morning and I shipped, I don't know what time yesterday, but it's, it's sad. It's, it's because I just have been having, you know, once I got behind, I had all these tasks to do and, um, you know, that bins trip and stuff. I just really got behind. I don't know how many things I've listed for the week. I would say only 40. And I normally sell 72 items a week minimum. And my goal is to list 20 to 30 a day if I can afford the inventory and have it. So my, my sales are really haunting, which doesn't help your cash flow, does it? So anyway, let's ship the four we have. I'm thankful. And now that I listed those 10 last night and then I got up, I photoed 11 items and I've got one, two, three, four, five. I got six of those done and it's only 9 a.m. I got up at five this morning and had a little bit of devotion time. I really want to pray about my decisions I'm going to make today. And um, so I spent a little bit of time and I didn't have breakfast right away. I came right down here after I got ready for the day and had a few devotions, came down and I got photoing and listing. And so I'll have these other five wiped out really quick. They're easy things. There's like shorts and, and t-shirts and, and stuff that's really easy to list. And I've already done the measurements and done the photos. So I'll definitely have 11 going up today. But after I talk to her, I think today I am going to have to have a nap. I mean, I only slept like three and a half to four hours last night. Um, part of it is I'm probably vibed up. Part of it, I don't know. I didn't drink too much caffeine or anything that I know of or eat anything different or do anything different. I just think I have this on my mind and maybe it is affecting my sleep more than I know. Like when I have a big decision to make, it just kind of affects my sleep. So 
I will go take a nap in the afternoon unless I just happen to have some kind of unusual energy, and that's great too. But I want to have the energy to, to get up or to list 20 more. So um, that's kind of the plan for today, guys. So let's go ahead and get shipping. I hear my puppy dog coming down. So, all right. Orders awaiting shipment. Four orders for $91. That is depressing. Um, I think with, well, I know with the 20 I... I put in that's going to really get the algorithm going again. What I really want to do is save my inventory behind me and do 10 a day and give myself some more time to um, just finish the cleanup here. There isn't that much more to do. I think I need two to three more days where I only list 10 and, and then I will pretty much be done with what's in this office and some of that stuff. Um, but then I still have days and days and days of editing and, and possible things that aren't even listed. Uh, the other thing tomorrow, I have an appointment with a gal who's coming over. She wants me to sell a bunch of jewelry for her. I've known her for years and years, and, um, you know, it's a inheritance-type situation. And it's not high-end, but she did separate the marked pieces from the unmarked. And I told her I'm not really a jewelry seller, but she's saying that, you know, her and her family just want whatever. There's no, like, certain price they're expecting. But I'm going to look up a lot of the marked ones with her here and just give her an idea, like... You know, it might take six months, but do you really want to, you know, do this or do you just want to take it somewhere? Um, and then the unmarked, I'll look through it. I She told me, I don't think it's Avon. I think it's a little bit better than that, um, but I might just sell that in a pile. I'm not going to do individual listings on unmarked single pair of earrings and stuff unless it's something really unique because my store just won't attract that kind of attention. Um I might also contact a gal who I know a couple hours away from here, and she sells a lot of jewelry, and she might just give give us a better price outright, or I'll do the bulk listing, and then I'll send it to her, and then there's some people in my group who I know, um, you know, who I can let them know, hey, I have this jewelry listing, so I think that I'll be able to help her, and... Um, we talked a couple months ago when the inheritance thing first came her way, and uh, I told her then, you know, that um, I'm willing to look at it. I'm not the best at jewelry. I can do the marked pieces better than the unmarked, and that, um, you know, I, I just can't keep it in my store forever. You have to be willing to kind of take the best prices I can get in a short period of time. So that's what I found with consignment is I have to really educate my people. I've done it many times in the past and people just, you know, they want the high price, but they want it in two months. You know, like some people I would tell them, listen, this may take a couple months, but then they would hound me big time after that and treat me like I was just like keeping their stuff. And so I pretty much have gotten away from consignment unless it's someone who just really, you know, I know, and they reach out to me. I don't just do people in town or anything anymore. And I really do kind of discourage them from having me do it. Like I lay down the law about, listen, I just don't want to be pressured by this. I do the best I can, but I list it right away. Like if you give it to me and I commit to it, I get it listed immediately. But unless you want me to just sell it off in a fire sale, don't stress me out by calling me, asking me where the money is. And this lady, I've known her for 25 years, so she's not that way, and she's a friend, so I'm willing to go ahead and do it. Um, so she'll come by tomorrow, and then thankfully, this guy's contacted me twice, so it looks like it's really going to go through. Um, if you've watched any of my office videos or my office cleanup videos, you've seen that I have that pedal car in there. And I lowered the price on Facebook. I just put 40 bucks. I just was hoping to get it to a good home, and we paid $5 at a garage sale. So if he comes tomorrow, like he says he is, then, um, you know, it's just... 30 bucks profit plus minus my time to research and at all. So I'm just basically getting it to a good home and I don't have to haul it to the thrift myself. And hopefully someone really gets something out of it or he's willing to sell it on eBay. I mean, I don't even care. But that'll be out of my um, room in there, which I'm thrilled with. And then I'm going to sweep and mop and just take about an hour and clean that tomorrow uh, if he comes or since I'm having my gal friend over, I might go ahead and clean it tonight and just put that outside out front or in my garage or something until he comes. So that's kind of my life the next day or two. Um, 
let's go ahead and get started because I do have my appointment coming up soon here, guys. So this is Travis Matthew. I normally do better on these, but this is a sweater, not a polo. And, um, I, you know, my photos are good. I've had this probably five months or something, I want to say. And um, it's not any special fabric. It's, it's, you know, not merino wool or anything. So I think I do better on the actual golf stuff. But, I mean, people wear golf sweaters. So I don't know why I could not move this better. But anyway, um, they did not use a coupon or uh, any kind of promotion. So I got $10.97 plus shipping. $22.17. I normally get at least $16 on a Travis Matthew Polo, if not $20. And then if it has the right golf course or the right logo, I do even better. And I don't know why... You know, maybe that's part of my problem. It's a lightweight sweater, and I have it as, um, you know, in a in a priority flat rate. So I'm sure that my prices are charging more for the shipping than needed to be. I don't know why I did that. Um, again, it probably, if anything, is because I was listing in a hotel room. So I do have a second scale, and when it's not the middle of winter and my scale won't get damaged by being out in the car overnight or whatever then um, I need to start traveling with, with my extra scale because I'm obviously off on um, a couple of things. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, let's see. thought I had my tape gun here. What did I do? <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, I, oh here we go. Ugh, I've been working on too many projects and I can't find anything. All right. Sometimes because I store my items a long time, not not all the time, but sometimes because I pack my items and prepack them, sometimes the tab will pull off when I'm looking for other things. And so that's why sometimes I reinforce these with tape is only because the sticky inside actually isn't very sticky anymore. So that's why I'm doing that. Normally on a sweater, those are going to hold just fine. So yeah, I've been listening, let's see, I've been listening to the Nurse Flipper this morning. You know, she has her Tuesday night call. I listened to our Tuesday night call in the group last night. And, you know, just the same thing. You know, you got to train yourself to list more. You got to, you know, train yourself how to do it quickly. Don't move your feet, that kind of thing. It's kind of the same, same message every Tuesday, but um, it, it's really interesting. So that kept me going until midnight. So that was good. That kept me kept me up and awake and and uh, stuff like that. All right, we got that one. So yeah, I, I don't think I listened to anything else interesting yesterday. It was just tons of YouTubers and tons of people. I didn't listen to any haul videos. I've been doing that for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, just because I'm going to the bins a lot and I want to make sure that I have some brands, new brands that I can kind of look for. So I was kind of bored with that yesterday. So I think I just listened to motivation and business theory. And then um, I was just so busy doing my paperwork. I can't even remember now what I listened to. Um, this is a Nike Golf dry fit skirt. It is a size 12. So, um, but I've also had this four months or something. And I don't know why, but I just um, could not get, um, gotta get that off there. I could not get more for it. So I got, uh, it sold via promoted and I got $9.99 plus shipping. So $17.11, which is okay. It's not bad, but it's a bins thing. So, you know, I paid, it's first class. So I would have paid like $1.25 or something for this. And let me see exactly how much it is so I can weigh it. It is 10 ounces. That's what I had in there. So 504 going to Huntington, West Virginia, which I love West Virginia. It's one of the most beautiful states in that, you know, you can imagine. If it's still true, I don't know. But when I was growing up and went to West Virginia a lot, it was always a true thing that they would tell you that the it's the most expensive um state to build roads in because you have to drill through so many um not mountains but just like hills and then when they drill through the hill to to make the road uh the striations of all the different colors on the side um 
yeah, Huntington and all that area is really um, pretty. Uh, my grandparents lived in Cowan, West Virginia for years and years and years. And so every summer when I went to Michigan, we would also go up to West Virginia and Ohio. And um, my husband and I went through that part of West Virginia and stopped in Cowan. And I had been there as a girl. I hadn't been there since I was like 14. And it's such a small town and I had such vivid memories of it that I thought I could just like find my grandparents' old house and find the grocery store and find the candy store that I used to walk to. And I mean, I just, I got there and it was a blank. Nothing looked like what I remembered. And um, I didn't have any older family members with me. Like my mom wasn't with me. It was just my memory and I couldn't find a thing. So, um, and we asked around, but they'd been gone 20 some years at least. And so, you know, it just didn't work out that we saw what I went there to see, but we'll get through there again. Okay. These are Eve St. Laurent pants. They are straight leg and they use promoted listings, but no coupons. So I sold them for 20 plus shipping, $29.95. Oh, I've got my piece of tape here. There we go. We'll stick that one on there. These are just, um, they're just gray. They're like straight leg. They're pleated and cuffed. Kind of a medium weight, um, a medium weight pants. They're uh, a wool blend. I found them at the bins. I don't normally even stop for Yves Saint Laurent, but that was one of those days when it was very slim pickings, and so it was in my pull pile, and so I just sat down and looked at it. Yeah, when I was at the bins in Denver um, this last weekend, I don't think I told anybody, but um, I don't think I remember it even, but um, one of the gals told me that that location is going to go to the um, conveyor belt system type thing, and I've never been to one of those bins that... Um, has the conveyor belt so I don't know a thing about it if you do put put it down in the um, comments but I guess that you can go to YouTube and I need to do that and just see what it's about but I'm just wondering how that's gonna work like people already run so if you're the first person when the conveyor belt comes down does it just dump fast enough that one person can't grab it all or what what are they going to enforce? Is that person who, you know, gets through that first pile, are they just going to keep moving? Because, I mean, if they'd allow me to, that's what I'd be tempted to do. Um, so I don't know, you know, and my understanding is that once that conveyor belt ends, maybe it goes around two or three times. I don't know. But once it ends, it just goes back in the back and then it's gone. So, you know, and a lot of times I find great stuff by digging in the older bins. So I'm interested to see... How that works, I, I really just need to go to YouTube. Maybe it'll make more sense to me, but the whole concept doesn't. Um, it does if everybody had to kind of stay where they were put and you were not allowed to like run ahead, but I don't think that's going to happen. The people in Denver, most of them are fine, but there are those people who just despite the workers, they'll like put their hand in it when you haven't been told you can touch it yet. And they just do it just to like, and they look right at the workers, you know. And so if they're not going to obey that rule that you're supposed to wait till they say shop and then you can put your hands in and start shopping. If you're not going to listen to that rule, why would you stay in one place and not just run around the conveyor belt? I, I don't understand it. Maybe it's set up so that you can't like maybe, I don't know. I got to go look at that. So yes, yeah, so I'm kind of sad about that. Thankfully, there's three bins in Denver, and so if only one converts and the other two are kind of the same, that's fine. Although, people who are not wanting to change might really go to the other two, and then it'll just be full. I think it'll depend on um, who likes the conveyor belt and who doesn't. It might be a really good improvement. That's what I'm hoping. All right, Carhartt Fire Resistant Jeans. These, um, I got less than I wanted on these two. These are $29.59 and I'm on the 4200s now. So I've had these a long time. I think the size is good. They're a 3832. Um, 
you know, I do not know. My pictures look good. My title structure looks pretty good to me. So I don't know why these, um, I just couldn't move them. But anyway, I sold these for $12.50 plus shipping because I just want to clearance them. Um, I know that Carhartts are good all year long. Like people in the summer still wear Carhartts if they're working outside and stuff. But um, I just feel like... Uh, you know, I gave that listing my my best go, and I just don't want to wait any longer. And I got these at the bin, so I would have paid two. Well, let's see. Okay, they're two two pounds six ounces. So I would have back then it was cheaper. It was like a dollar forty nine a pound when I would have bought these. But still, I paid like three fifty probably for these, and took twelve fifty. So definitely not my goal. Today I'm listing pretty basic stuff in the $20, $25 range, at least these 10. Now, I, I know I have some good stuff over in the in my pile, so I'm hoping that, um, you know, I have some $50 sales in there. I know I have some good stuff. I just have to get to it and get it listed. This one's going to Virginia. So, yeah. That's the difference, too, is I have some high-end things over there like the um, humidifier, and I really need to just list some of my couple of higher-end things, even if they are hard goods. Right now, I'm just trying to um, get this pile off the floor so I can sweep and mop, but... I don't think I'll have time to run to the mail because I'm supposed to be on here by 10, and I need to pull up... Um, Pull up the Zoom thing. All right, guys, so those are my four, and then I had one more come in. I'll read it to you. I'm going to go ahead and go get it and ship it, but it just, just came in while we were here. Um, it's something, maybe it's right here even, but no, I don't think so. I think I listed this yesterday, maybe. This is a Jane and Delancey shirt. It's a woman's large, pink striped, open shoulder, and baby doll. And this is a Ben's find that was, you know, really lightweight. And it had tags, and instead of taking it to the consignment, I decided to just take a chance on it, even though that brand doesn't have a super huge um, sell-through. But I'm glad I did, because I just literally listed this um, yesterday, I believe. And so um, it sold via promoted, no coupon. I got 15 plus shipping. So twenty three twenty seven. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go uh, have my appointment and try to get some clarity. Um, I think you know sometimes that's uh, the best thing you can do is let someone else in and just try to give you some clarity, give you some new ideas, and then my husband and I will pray about it today and just kind of you know decide um, how much we want to scale. Um, you know how soon can we scale? And all of that good stuff. So I'll report back to you guys. And thank you for watching my videos. If you don't mind, subscribe. Um, I don't know what I'll title those videos yet. Um, I'll have to come up with a name that people can kind of find that series of videos on. I guess scaling my eBay business is probably what I will title the first one. So just look for that if you're interested. And I'll share as much as I can, um, you know, without telling my whole life story. But I will do that. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.